ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶದಯಾಪಾತ್ರಂ ಧೀಭಕ್ತಿಯಾದಿ ಗುಣಾರ್ಣವಂ ಯತೀಂದ್ರ ಪ್ರವಣಂ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿಂ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯಾಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮಾಂ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಂ ಅಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜಯುಗ್ಮರುಗ್ಮ ವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ಗುರೋರ್ ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯಾ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಶೈಲೇಶಣ ವಂದೇ ರಮ್ಯ ಜಾತರ ಮುನಿ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮೀನಾಥ ಸಂಭಾಂ ನಾಥಯ ಮುನ ಮಧ್ಯಮ ಅಸ್ಮದಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ವಂದೇ ಗುರು ಪರಂಪರಾಂ ಯೋ ನಿತ್ಯಮಚ್ಯುತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜೇತ್ಮರುಕ್ಮವ್ಯಾಮೋಹತಸ್ತರಿತರಾಣಿ ತೃಣಾಯಮೇನೆ ಸ್ವಗುರೋರ್ಭಗವತೋಸ್ಯ ದೈಕ ಸಿಂಧೋ ರಾಮಾನುಜ ಚರಣೌ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಲೋಕಾಚಾರ್ಯ ಗುರವೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪಾದ ಸೂನವೇ ಸಂಸಾರ ಭೋಗಿ ಸಂದಷ್ಟ ಜೀವ ಜೀವಾತವೇ ನಮಃ a brief introduction <coughs> to the three rahasyas namely the ashtakshara mahamantra that is known as the tiru mantra or the mantra raga and the second mantra that is <coughs> dwaya mantra which is also known as the mantra ratna <coughs> and the third one which is known as the charma shloka as far as the charma shloka is concerned it is in the form of a sanskrit verse or a poem and basically the main charma shloka is the shri krishna charma shloka which was chanted by lord krishna which was given in the form of an instruction by lord krishna to arjuna at the fag end of the bhagavad gita but as far as the charma shlokas are concerned there are three charma shlokas the principal charma shloka that is explained in this work is the shri krishna charma shloka which is part of the bhagavad gita it is sarva dharma an parityajya mam ekam sharanam vraja aham twa sarva papebhya mokshayishyami maashtaka but as far as the shri vaishnava sampradaya is concerned there are two more charma shlokas which are in many ways similar but in many ways dissimilar also in other words there are several similarities as well as dissimilarities between these three charma shlokas so the second charma shloka is the rama charma shloka that is if we go in the ascending order because of the three charma shlokas the last one the latest one is the charma shloka authored by or uh, given by lord krishna in the bhagavad gita whereas the one given by lord rama is part of the ramayana as we all know and we all also know that the ramayana precedes the mahabharata so the rama charma shloka is as follows which was explained by me in detail in the previous session sakradeva prapannaya tavasvi tichaya chate abhayam sarva bhutebhyo dadamye tatvratam mama and this was mentioned by rama to his followers who were assembled on the <coughs> banks of the ocean even as he was about to cross it to proceed to lanka before he killed ravana 
So this is in the context of Vibhishana, Vibhishana Sharanagati or Vibhishana <coughs> taking refuge in the feet of Lord Rama. This I have explained in the previous session in detail. The third Charma Shloka belongs to the Varaha Avatara, the Varaha Incarnation of the Supreme Lord Narayana. And it was mentioned by Lord Varaha himself to his consort, Goddess Lakshmi, who is actually common to all avatars in one way. Of course, it is said that Raghavatve Abhavat Sita Rukmini Krishna Janmani Anyeshucha Avatareshu Vishno Shri Ranapai. Of course, we do not have any specific reference to Goddess Mahalakshmi, how she was when the Lord incarnated as a fish and also as a tortoise. Whereas, on the other hand, he has specific references to Goddess Mahalakshmi accompanying the Lord in all the other avatars almost. So, <clears throat> for example, in the Varaha avatara, she sat on the lap of on his left lap. The Narasimha avatara also after the Lord Narasimha killed Hiranyakashipu, she sat on his left lap. Of course, in Parashurama avatara and Vamana avatara, we don't have specific uh, references, but it is said that even as the Lord incarnated as Vamana, everybody could see the goddess Mahalakshmi situated in the chest region of the Lord. So, Vamana purposefully covered it with his, with the Krishna Jana or the deer skin, which Brahmacharis are supposed to sport. And once again in Parashurama Avatara, we don't have any specific references. Of course, in Badrama Avatara also. But in Krishna Avatara, we have Rukmini, Raghavatve, Abhavat, Sita, Rukmini, Krishna, Janmani. In Dama Avatara, we have specific references of Sita that is incarnating, the goddess Mahalakshmi incarnating as Sita. And also, Goddess Mahalakshmi incarnating as Rukmini. But it is said that Anyeshu cha avatareshu Vishnu ho shrihi anapayini. So they can never be separated. Whether she is there in a form that is manifest or not, she can never be separated from the Lord. That is why. God is a, uh, Sita tells Hanuman or tells Ravana also in the Ramayana where she says Ananya Raghavena Ham Bhaskarena Prabhayata Yatha Just as the orb of the sun cannot be separated from the sun similarly I can never be separated from Brahma which essentially means God is Lakshmi can never be separated from Lord Vishnu. In some incarnations, she comes as a separate woman, in the form of a separate woman. Or in some other incarnations, she remains unmanifest only, as in the Matsya Avatara, Kurma Avatara, or the fish incarnation, the tortoise incarnation, etc. So in the present context, in the Varaha Purana, there is a specific mention of this beautiful Varaha Charama Shloka. Some people say it is available in the Varaha Purana. Some people say it is not available. Anyway, it is universally accepted that it was mentioned by or it was given as an instruction by Lord Varaha, Lord Vishnu in his Varaha incarnation to his consort, Goddess Mahalakshmi. What is it? In fact, it is in the form of two stanzas and extremely important to all of us Jeevatmas. So what does it say? It says so. Sthite manasi susvasthe sharire satiyo naraha 
धातु साम्ये स्थिते स्मर्ता विश्वरूपम जमामजम ततस्तम रियमानंतु काष्ठ पाशान सन्निभम अहम् स्मरामि मत्पत्तम नयामि परमाम गतिम very beautiful two shlokas which are most ever relevant to all of us. So I would like to explain the background of this Varatrama Shloka very briefly. In the Bhagavad Gita, there is a specific statement which says, Yam yam vapisvaram bhavam yajatyante kadevaram tamtamevai tikaunteya Sadatat bhava bhavitaha. So Lord Krishna says, what is the next birth of a person? How is it determined? How is the next birth of a person determined? This question is answered by Krishna in the following manner. He says, Yam yam vapis maran bhavam yajati ante kanevar. So, when the individual soul or the jivatma exits the, that particular body, at that moment, whatever he is thinking about, that will actually be his next birth. And in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we have a very beautiful story and instance of this where in the Jadabharata Opakhyana, we see the story of Jadabharata, who was actually a realized soul, he had already had the divine vision of the Supreme Lord. But even then, still there was some small iota of sin or iota of some karma that he had to undergo, due to which he becomes enamored about a small deer or a farm rather. He becomes so much attached to it that when he is about to leave his body, he is always thinking about that fawn only or the young deer only. And he leaves his body thinking about the deer only. And he is born as a deer. Then he realizes that his mistake. And as soon as he <coughs> gives up the body of the deer, he becomes born as a great Bhagavata. And the story that goes, all of you, I am sure, will be familiar with that story. Therefore, it is mentioned that the moment when the individual soul leaves the body is very vital as far as the further happenings of the Jivatma are concerned. Therefore, it is very important that a person thinks about God and nothing else when the body is sacrificed or when the body is given up by the Jivatma. But is it possible? Because Kulashekara Alvar says in his Bhagya, in his Mukundamana, a very beautiful statement. He says, Prana prayana samaye kapavata pithaihi kanthavarodhana vidhaus maranam putaste. Is it possible for a person to think about the God, about the Lord Narayana, when the person is about to leave the body? He says, generally, it is not possible. Because it is a very, very, very difficult defining moment. Because as per the Dharma Shastras and also as per the other Smriti works, this Jivatma is so much enamored about this body as far as ordinary human beings are concerned. So, for example, if we live Suppose we stay in a hotel room for two or three days. When we, are, when we have to vacate that and check out, we feel a little bit sad. 
for three days we have been living in this room and we feel a little bit uncomfortable sitting out. Similarly, if a person has lived in a house for about four to five years or 20 years, 30 years, the more he lives, the more he is enamored about the house. He doesn't want to give it up. If he enjoys that of properties in terms of lands, estates, etc., he is even more attached to it. So he finds it very difficult to give it up. When it is so, this individual soul which has lived in this body for so many years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60, 70, 80, as the case may be, it finds it most difficult to leave it. Leave it. Because it is enamored about its house where it has, which has provided it succor for so many years. This is one aspect. Second aspect is, in Sanskrit there is a word called prana sankat. We use it in other contexts also, when we want to denote something which is very much difficult for a person to experience. So there is a huge conflict between the Jivatma and the Supreme Lord. So. When, when the time comes, when the call comes from beyond, from the divine, for the Jivatma to leave, leave, the, leave the body, the Jivatma isn't prepared to do so. So it tries to cling on to the body. And the whatever divine force is there, it tries to take it away as, as, as early as possible or when it has to do so. This is one aspect. Secondly, so many medical issues are there. So, Kulashekara Alvar says, Prana Prayana Samaye Kapavata Pithaihi Kantavaro Dhananita. So, according to Ayurveda, these are the three humors. Yuvata, Pitta and Kapha. They become totally vitiated and facilitate the Jivatma to actually move out of the body. But at that time, the Jivatma experiences the greatest of all pains, which can never be explained in words. So that is why there is a saying in Sanskrit which says, Anayasena maranam vinadainyena jiva. A person has to ask only for two things in this life. All other things are preordained. So it is said, a person I should ask for a death which is devoid of pain or ayasa as it is known. So anayase namaranam and vina dainyena jivana. When we are alive, we should live without being subservient to anything. Quote, we are subservient to the Supreme Lord, that's not the, that is good. We should not be totally subservient to some other jiva, which makes life a hell. So, and the main aspect is anayase in a So, Kulashekara Alvar says, can the jiva or individual soul even imagine thinking about God when he undergoes so much of pain? So there are several stories. Suppose I want to concentrate on something. Suppose there is a nagging pain in my hand or head or some place. Will I be able to concentrate? So when even concentrating on an ordinary object is not possible if I am having some pain, would it be possible for a Jeevatma to concentrate on the Supreme Lord when he is experiencing excruciating pain? even as he is about to leave the body, both from the point of view of the medical science, the traditional Indian medical science, as well as from the point of view of his being enamored about his own house, in which that is this body in which he has lived for so long. This is where the Varaya Tarama provides a beautiful, beautiful solution. 
So, Lord Varaha or Lord Vishnu who is in the form of Varaha says, Sthite manasi susvasthe sharire satiyo naraha bhatusamye sthite smartha Yes, I understand that a person when he is about to leave his body becomes very weak, he undergoes excruciating pain, he undergoes all sorts of difficulties. And it's, he says, Tatastam Riyamanantu Kashtha Pashana Samnitham. So once the body is given up by the Jivatma, this body becomes like stone. It is life like, lifeless like a stone or like a log of wood. Kashta and Pashan. So I agree that Parvara says, yes, it is true that when the Jivatma is support, supposed to exit his body, he experiences immense pain and he experiences all sorts of difficulties. But he says, he provides the, the best solution. And he says, Sthite manasi susvasthe. When the Jivatma is leading a good life, when his mind is clear, when he is happy, Sharire susvasthe. When his body is also in equilibrium, when it is in good shape, dhatu samye. So dhatus are the tissues that actually make up this body. Now, according to Ayurveda, there are several dhatus or tissues that make up this body. And when those tissues are all well, then what he has to do? What this Divatma individual soul has to do. Smarta Vishwarupam Chamamajam. When he is well, when he is happy, generally we do not think about God when we are happy. Only when we experience some sort of misery, we think about God. That is why in Canada there is a saying, Sankata Bandare Venkata person will say, Oh Venkatramana, Oh Lord Venkateshwara. Only when he has some misery, only when he is sad, it should not be the case. So Lord Varaha says, a person, when his body is good, fine, his mind is fine, clear, and all his tissues are still working in a nice manner, Sthite manasi susvaste shari resati yodaraha dhatu samye sthite maam vishwarupam ajam smarta. Then he has to think about me. He has to think about me constantly. Then what will I do? Tatastam riyamanan tukashta pashana sannibham. Aham smarami madhaktam. If a person has constantly meditated upon me when he is all right, then I will take the responsibility of giving him the <coughs> remembrance of me at the last moment when he is going to leave the body. Aham smarami madhaktam nayami paramangatim. So if a person has remembered me when he is all right, I will remember him when he is about to die. I will remember him when his body has become like a log of wood or like stone. And he is about to leave the body. And I will ensure that he gets that Antima Smriti as it's known. I will ensure that he will get the remembrance of my divine form when he is leaving his body. And also I will ensure that he attains Paramapada or Moksha. 
So two very beautiful shlokas. Sthite manasi susvaste sharire sapiyo naraha dhatusam ye sthite smarta vishwarupam chamamajam tatastam riyamanantu kashtha pashana sannibham aham smarami matthattam nayami paramam gatim So, as Sri Vaishnavas, and since we are learning this work as Sri Vaishnavas, I would like to mention incidentally that we are all taught in our tradition all the three Charamashtokas. And these, so when a person is wearing his Urdhva Pundram or Thiruman as it is known, according to the Sri Vaishnava Achara Krama or the routine that the Sri Vaishnava has to undertake. A person, after taking birth, this is all mentioned in the Sri Vaishnava Anushtana Kramas. After a person takes bath, he has to first sing. I am sure you might be familiar, but if you are not familiar with this, I would like to mention this. So, the, in the Sri Vaishnava Achara Krama, the first work that a person has to learn from his Guru in the Karakshepa method is the Anhika Vidhi or the daily routines that a Sri Vaishnava has to perform right from the moment he rises from sleep in the morning. So how he has to, when he is lying down, as soon as he, uh, he is awake and <clears throat> he is ready to get up, how to get up, then to which side he has to, of course, one has to, while sleeping, one has to sleep towards the left. So, Hitabuk, it is also very important from the point of view of Ayurveda because in the night, when one sleeps, when one goes to sleep, goes to bed, he has to sleep to his left. And when he is about to rise, he has to turn to his right and then rise. So, how he has to rise? Then, when he is about to step on the floor from his bed, then he has to chant the shloka para samudra vasane devi, parvata samudra, parvata stana mandale, padas parsham kshama swami, that is a very beautiful shloka. So like this, all these routines have been very beautifully prescribed. And these routines are very significant as far as the overall wellness of the person is concerned. They are not only pertaining to physical wellness, but also mental wellness, spiritual wellness, societal wellness, etc. So they are associated with all round wellness of a human being. It is very important. And <clears throat> it is also very important that to note that if a person follows these routines properly, he, his health is also maintained in an optimum manner. <clears throat> but I will not go into those details right now. So after the person takes bath, how to take bath. So after person, the personal hygiene, after a person passes stools or urine, how to clean oneself, etc., etc. All these things, personal hygiene aspects have been very beautifully mentioned in our ancient works. And these are more refined as far as the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya is concerned. So even how one has to take bath. What are the shlokas or verses that are to be chanted before that? Then after that, then which are the tarpanas a person has to perform? So it is mentioned as Mananga Deva Shipitri Tarpana. So all these things are very beautifully mentioned and of course today we may not be able to follow much of it. But several things can certainly be followed wherever we are because they are not too complicated. 
<coughs> so in this kind of why i mentioned this is that when a person after taking bath and when he is adorning himself with the urja putra as we call it has to chant the guru parampara from shri shri dash bayapat and also he has to chant the ashtakshara mahamantra dwaya mantra and the karma shloka the three rahasyas which we are <coughs> supposed to study in this class and while chanting we were all taught to chant all the three karma shlokas the krishna karma shloka the ram karma shloka and the varaha karma shloka which was just explained by me right and my i have seen my father chanting it even now and i have seen my grandfather and several others who chant it even today because it is most meaningful and ultimately that is what is going to protect us when all of us are have to leave this body one day so these are the three <coughs> rahasyas and in the charma shloka once again there are three that is the rama charma shloka krishna that is krishna charma shloka rama charma shloka and varaha charma shloka all three are extremely relevant to all the jivatmas not only shri vaishnavas but all jivatmas because as i mentioned god krishna did not address this to arjuna only he said whoever it is this is very well explicitly mentioned by rama he says abhayam sarva bhute bhyo dadami it need not be a human being also it can be even an animal it can be even a um, tree for that mind so that is why it is said stavarani pi mutchin and there is a very beautiful sto- sto- story in our sampradaya where it is mentioned that swami nambillai one of the premier most acharyas gave salvation to a tree which had not going to because it's a very nice story but i am not going to that in fact if you are interested i'll mention it so in some other context thus this is very all the three are extremely important so with these words i proceed to the introduction of the mukshupadi given by swami manavada mahami so even before that there are a few more issues that need to be uh, delineated which i will do right now so three important aspects are to be known before a text is begin to be explained that is vatra vaishishtyam or the uniqueness or importance of the author of the work then vachya vaishishtyam that is the uniqueness of the specialty of the subject matter that is going to be explicated and the third one is adhikari vaishishtyam or the characteristics of the seeker or person studying the work in modern language it is known as target language so who is the vatta or who is the <coughs> person who is addressing who is authoring this work of mukshupadi what is his uniqueness this is very important because unless we know the greatness or the speciality of the author many a times we don't read through the book so for example you take a very very uh, laukika example as we call it or a very mundane example so you go you just walk into a bookshop and you want to read a thriller or something action thriller or something like that so then you see there will be some art authors like sydney sheldon or jeffrey archer or uh, some person like that so many a times what happens in books like this the name of the author will be mentioned in 50 point size or 60 point size and the name of the book will be mentioned in 5 points or 10 points so once i asked a very elderly person why is it that the name of the author is mentioned in such a big size on the book whereas the name of the book is 
even in such a small sense. Then that person who knew this aspect very well, he said, no, people see the name of the author and then pick up the book. The title of the author is very important, whereas the title of the book is not at all important. But in this case, it is not. It is very much true, but not in the sense in which the action thrillers are important. Here, it is very important to know the author of the work, know something about the author of the work, because the author of the work is one of the greatest Sri Vaishnava Acharyas who adorn the lineage of Sri Vaishnavas. And that is none other than Swami Pudle Loka Acharya and also the commentary, commentator Swami Manavada So Swami Pudle Loka Acharya was the epitome of Jnana, Bhakti and Vairagya. He was steeped in knowledge, knowledge of the Divine. And as a result, he had the greatest amount of devotion unto the Supreme Lord. And as a result, once again, he had, he had totally renounced everything other than the Lord. So he was, he was the epitome of Vairagya also, that is renunciation. Or <clears throat> absence, total absence of attachment towards anything worldly in this world. In this, in this world. And not only was he that, he was also a great scholar. He was one of the best scholars in the Sri Vaishnava Acharya lineage. And his uh, life history can be explained in great detail, but I will not go into that. You can get the authentic life history of the of uh, Swami Pritilaka Acharya online, so you may read it. But his <clears throat> uniqueness has been explained in this shloka which is his Jnana Shloka, which I will explain very briefly. It says, Loka Charyaya Gurave Krishna Padasya Sunave Samsara Bhogi Sandashta Jeeva Jeeva Tave Namaha So he was the son of Krishna Mishra or Padakatirvidi Pille as he is known in Tamil language. And he has been explained, his uniqueness has been explained in one simple aspect. It very beautifully says, Samsara Bhogi Sandashta Jeeva Jeeva Tave Namaha. He is the life giver to the individual soul who has been bitten by a very poisonous snake called samsara or this material world. See how beautifully it has explained what is his greatness. This material world is like a poisonous snake. And what does a poisonous snake generally do? If it comes into contact with a human being, of course, it is mentioned that the poisonous snake like a cobra will bite only when it is destined to do so. But we are all bitten by the cobra, which is a poisonous snake called the material world because we are all associated with our karmas. We are born here in this world as a result of our karmas. Because we don't have any control over most of the aspects of our life. I mentioned this many times because we have to realize how incapable we are with regard to all aspects of life. We cannot control when we are born. We cannot control when we are going to die. It, it is not in our hands. We do not have any control over as to whose parents, whose children or whose child we are to be born. In the sense, in other words, nobody can choose his father and mother. So he is brought into this world by his parents, who are only Nimitta Matras. It is God who brings, it, brings us to this world through the parents. 
but the person who is born in this world can never choose his parents he can never say i should be born as the son or daughter of this person such and such a father and mother similarly nobody can determine when a person is to be born nobody can determine when a person is going to die and even none of the functioning of the body etc is under our control we cannot control our our heartbeat we cannot control our our uh, breathing except to some small extent i can hold my breath for 10 seconds or 15 seconds or if a person is expert in pranayama he can do it for 90 seconds or even 120 seconds but can he do it forever no and we breathe involuntarily when we are sleeping we don't we we do not intentionally do anything to breathe our heart functions on its own our uh, digestive organs function on, on its own our brain functions on its own even when we are sleeping when we are dreaming even if we are in the unconscious state so a jeevatma or an individual so it has no control almost no control whatsoever on any of the happenings of this world can we control any other person when we cannot control our own selves how can we control some other person can we control many times i think why it has to become why morning has to come so fast but it comes with alarming like a regularity morning and evening happen evenings happen and by the time i think already 3 weeks have gone in this after we started the moksha padi class today already it is the 21st day 3 weeks have elapsed so it is said samsara bhogi sandashta jeeva jeeva so the individual soul is bitten by this snake poisonous snake called samsara where nothing is under his control and ultimately what has to happen to us ultimately we have to get rid of this samsara because one day everybody has to leave this but swami pidlaloka acharya is a person who actually <coughs> gives life to this person who is almost dead and takes him to the highest possible <coughs> plane of life that is moksha so that is how pidlaloka acharya has been very beautifully described and as i mentioned he is also believed to be the avatar of lord varadraja varadraja himself and there are several instances that quote this i will not go into that because you can refer to it on your own and as i mentioned he has the aparoksha jnana of what sharanagati is all about what a sharanagata should do and how it is applicable to all human beings like us especially the shri vaishnavas who have taken the diksha of the three mantras from their acharya who has come in the parampara of ramanuja acharya and therefore he is the best person to tell us about the hidden meanings of the three rahasyas or the mumukshu padi as it is called so this is the uniqueness of the importance of the author of the work which i have explained in a very brief manner second is the vachya vaishishtya so vachya is the subject matter that is going to be explained in this work what is it it is the elixir that enables a person to become amrita or to go beyond the cycle of births and deaths that we have been experiencing from time in memory therefore it is most 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 useful to all the jeevas that is why later he is going to explain that these mantras are vyapaka mantras so there are two types of mantras vyapaka mantras and vyapya mantras i am not going to the details right now 
and these are vyapaka mantras that are universally applicable irrespective of caste creed nationality young gold sex that is whether a person is a uh, male female or transgender or whatever it is so it's applicable to each and every human being in this this universe therefore it is most important for us to know what it is all about and that is the speciality of the subject matter once again we will see what it is going to be told in the introduction of manavana and third one is adhikari vaishishtya is the characteristics of the seeker or the person studying the work of the target audience once again as i mentioned just now every person in this universe is the target audience whether he realizes it or not it is addressed to him also so that is why in the varaha tarama shloka as i mentioned and in the rama tarama shloka it is mentioned abhayam sarva bhutebhya not only human beings all other beings all other living beings whether they are human beings or animals or even trees that is why it is said sthavaranya api mochyam sthavara means immovable entities that have life it is a proven fact that trees have lives therefore if they have life they are they are also bound to undergo bondage or samsara and if they are undergoing bondage they are bound to have mukti or moksha on at some time or the other therefore all beings in this world are the target targets so our trees might understand it or not animals may know or not but human beings definitely have to know what it is all about so that is the adhikari or the person who is the seeker so he should actually be who is he how he is going, he should be etc is explained in the pramukha padi itself very beautifully he says puram bundana patte kelayade vasaniyode vidayam per tapparanya tudindirikkayam pet kirtarikkayam so like this Pradhoka Acharya gives twelve or about around fifteen different characteristics. In a very beautiful manner. He lists them out, and he says, "In the Vaishnava Adhikari Kya Vasya Pekshitam." All these characteristics have to be embedded in the psyche of the Vaishnava Adhikari or Sri Vaishnava, who is fit to. practice chant and understand these three mahamantras so this is the adhikari vaishishtya or characteristics of the seeker or person studying the work which is called as the target audience in modern parlance and when we come to understanding the mukshupadi unless we have the commentary of swami manavala mamuni it is very difficult to understand one may question what is the difficulty vedoka acharya has authored it in very simple tamil in manipravada language for example mumukshuti ariyavendum rahasyam moondru adil prathama rahasyam tere mantram see how simple it is a person desirous of attaining liberation has to no the three rahasyas and among them trimantra is the first one what is the great difficulty one can read the trans one can just if he knows the language he can very easily understand it what is so difficult about this no 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 in sanskrit it is said vyakhya nato vishesha pratipatti लिटरल मीनिंग इज क्वैट सिंपल दी hidden meanings are very profound which we can understand we can imagine to understand 
only if we have guidance of the great commentary of Swami Madhavan. That is why he is also known as the Vyakhyana Chakravarti in the Sri Vaishnava tradition. So without his commentary, you cannot understand the hidden meanings, hidden profound meanings of the works of Lidokacha. So Madhavan Mamani has taken great pains to comment on both the Shrivachana Bhushanam, the Mamukshu Padi and several other works, as well as the Acharya Hirdim of another great, great, great exponent of Shiva Vaishnava Kudasi, that is Alahiya Manavan Piraman Nainar, who was the brother of Kudalokacha. Unless we have the commentary of Manavan Mamani, we will not be able to understand the depth of these two works. And the significance of the commentary in Sri Vaishnava faith. This is very important. Because no other religion or philosophy, I can say this with a huge amount of confidence, has this much amount of commentaries written on certain important things. For example, if you take the Trivai Muri of Swami Namarga, which contains 1,102 stanzas. We have five commentaries. The first commentary was known as Ara Irupadi, which was authored by Tirukkurai Piran Pillanar Purukesha, who was the Jnanaputra of Ramananda Chandra, who authored the commentary as per the command of Acharya Ramananda. This is the Ara Irupadi, or it is known as Padi Padi. And generally, it is mentioned that one Padi equals 32 alphabets or letters. And the commentary on Thiruvai Mudi, authored by Thirukkurai Piran Bilan or Kurukesha, as he was known, contains 6,000 into 32 alphabets. Why did he do so? Because Vishnu Purana has 6,000 verses. Then you have the Onbadanaya Rappadi or 9,000 commentary. Then Panniraya Rappadi, the 12,000 commentary. Then the Rivatanaya Rappadi, 24,000 commentary of Piriyavatsan Pili. And then the huge magnum opus called Eda Muppattaraya Rappadi, that is the 36,000 commentary. So five commentaries on one single work, each complementing and supplementing each. It's a beautiful, beautiful topic to study, to have a comparative study between these commentaries. And then we have the Rahasya Krimtha Parampara, that is the Ashtarasya Rahasyas of Pilladoka Acharya and also the uh, Srivachana Bhushnam and then Acharya Hrdim of Adayamana Vadapurmana. All of on which Swami Manavala Mamani has commented on. And apart from that, he has commented upon several other, he has explained several other pramanas or <coughs> quotings from the earlier Vyakhyanas or commentaries, which is another great contribution. So we see that there is an unbroken tradition of commentaries right from Namadvar to the present. And then, as I mentioned, all these commentaries are very significant. The commentary of Manavada Mamani is most significant because he could understand the needs of the times. And he has, not only he has come commented upon in a profound manner, it is Extremely simple but profound. Many times people talk in a very simple manner, but there is no profundity. Sometimes people people are very profound, but what they say goes about the head of the or the, uh, above the head of the ordinary man. But the significance of the commentaries of Manavada Mamani are they are extremely simple, but at the same time they are profound. And now we come to the traditional introduction to the Mumukshu Padi 
by Sri Madhavana Mahavani. So this I will explain in the next class as we have exhausted the time of one hour that is fixed for this purpose. So this we will see in the next class. If there are any questions or interactions, you are most welcome. Hello. Yes, Swami. Um, uh, thank you very much. Another introductory class. Yes. And uh, so uh, we're very interested to understand uh, because there are different, you mentioned about a Hanukkah, different yes. Hanukkahs. And yes. uh, we, I, I have seen many different Hanukkahs in Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya, uh, even uh, there's the Hoblamat Anikam, uh, Gopal Deshika Anikam, and yes. uh, I think uh, Manavala Mahamuni himself ma must have done an Anikam. And yes. uh, even uh, Sri Padramanu Jacharya has his Nitya Granta, yes. which is, I guess, the original prototype Anikam for Sri Vaishnava. Uh, yes, uh, he, there the focus is uh, on the way the Aradhanam, Tiruvaradhanam has to be performed. But of course, several. <laughs> Uh, issues concerning the Anikam also are there. Yes. And uh, all, of the, all of these Anikams which have come uh, uh, from after Ramanujacharya, uh, they're also all based on Pancharatra Agamas, uh, Panchakala Kriya Deepa, and these sort of. Yes. Uh, these sort of they, are based on the, they are based on the Smriti works and also Agama works. And also, they are significant from the point of view of Ayurveda also. So I will <laughs> explain that if you are interested in, in, in another class. So my, my question would be, uh, with so many different works, which are, I mean, they're all basically the same, uh, but, uh, but uh, with, there are slight variations in the works. Uh, they are to be, they are to, the particulars are to be learned from the Acharya who gives some Ashrayanam, or the particulars can be learned from any Acharya? No, they can be learned. That is why I mentioned in the first class. So, Uttaraka Acharya and Upakaraka Acharya. They can be learned by the Upakaraka Acharya. There is nothing wrong with that. So, uh, I think um, many people might be were interested when you said that uh, all three charma all three charma slokas are chanted at the time of Udva Pundra Dharana. Yes. Uh, because this may not be the normal uh, or or usual. Uh, system for many Sri Vaishnavas? Uh, many people may not know the speciality of this uh, tradition. So they may not uh, chant, they may not chant it, but it is universally accepted. There is nothing, uh, nobody who says, no, these two are not Charma Shlokas, because even Vedanta Deshika has beautifully written about Abhaya Pradhana Sara in the, he has written a separate independent work which talks about this, and he also accepts the Varaha Charma Shloka. So it is uni all the three are universally accepted. Some people have uh, added it to their Nitya Karma Anushthana itself, which is, uh, of course, not contradictory to any practice. Yes. Anyway, uh, it may be it may be interesting for some some persons to go through some some f uh, form of instruction on Anikam. If you were willing to do that, or somebody else was willing to do that. That would also be we very can, interesting. We can, have, we can have one small class on that. Of course, it may not be able to do, explain it in one class, but probably no, three or four classes. Uh, let us see if we can, if, you are, if people who are attending are interested, we can have one more class uh, probably on Sundays or on some other day in the, during the course of the week itself. Because that is one very important topic. It needs to be known and it is ever relevant. <laughs> Today, now, yes, and uh, so if 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 we can arrange that, then I can. If you can give me the text form of the different mantrams and uh, and procedure, then I can put it into uh, Roman or English uh, English letters for people who can cannot read the Tamil letters and the. Yeah, I have to. I have to engage a person to type them down. I will see what, how to do it, and I will get it done. 
Yes. Well, you can if you can just if you have a book in 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 English, you can scan it, and I can. But it is it is in the form of it actually it is printed in Telugu script. I, I can so, I can I can change it from Telugu into Roman. No problem. Ah, uh, let me see. I will scan it and I will uh, highlight the relevant portions and send it to you. That is Thank you. Question. The other question that I had was there was a whole discussion that you had in the beginning of the introduction today about uh, how how Goddess Mahalakshmi accompanies the Lord in every uh, every avatar, either either as a form of Sri Vatsa on his chest, uh, in, inherent in the in the body of the Lord, or uh, separately as a separate personality as his wife or consort, like Rukmini, like Sita. Uh, now, my question is that uh, many sometimes we have heard that Sita Devi is an incarnation of Bhu Devi. We we also hear that uh, Varaha has his consort is also Bhu Devi. Sometimes yes. sometimes we hear the discussion about Krishna, that Krishna Avatara he had uh, uh, when he was in Dwarka, Rukmini and Satyabhama, they are equivalent to Sri Devi and Bhu Devi. But and also in sometimes people also talk about uh, his consort in Vrindavan, uh, Radha, as being a, a avatar of Nila Devi. Yes. So there there are all these different concepts. So my question is: in Vaikuntha, we know that there are Sri Devi, Bhu Devi, and Nila Devi. They all have yes. they all have separate personalities and existences. Yes. But so when you say when you quote from Vishnu Purana saying that. Uh, that Mahalakshmi accompanies the Lord in every birth. Uh, when, when sometimes we hear people say that the consort of Raha is Lakshmi, Mahalakshmi, the consort of, of, of Rama is Mahalakshmi, but in other places they say Bhu Devi or, 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 or Nila Devi is the consort. So are we, are we to understand that all these three Devis are one and the same or they're, they're distinct personalities? Uh, so it is like this. My my guru used to explain it in a very beautiful manner. So <clears throat> the principal consort, of course, is Sri Devi, because uh, everywhere we say Sri Pati, Sri Pati, etc. And uh, so that is how it is. But she herself takes three forms in the sense: Bhumi, Bhumi, or this uh, Earth. Also, it is mentioned specifically that Stri Praya Mitarat Sarva. So the Lord alone is the Purusha and everything is Stri or is, is, is of the feminine form and only the Lord is the male form in this world. So when we take that into account, this Bhumi or this universe actually also is totally subservient to So it is actually given the form of a Devi or consort. That is why we have in all the Divya Deshas, we have Sri Devi and Bhu Devi between, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in the two sides of the Lord. Whether it is Sri Rangam or Main Kote, Itarnara and Puramat, all for all the, almost all the 108 Divya Deshas, you can keep it right. And then Neela is my, my Atharya very beautifully used to say. So it is na ila nila. Ila is bhumi. So one more consort who represents the jivatma. So there is a very beautiful shloka in the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya which says Swamitva Atmatva Sheshatva Pumstva Adhyaha Swamino Gunaha Svebhyo Dasatva Dehatva Vashitva Stritva Dai. Four corresponding qualities between the Lord and his consorts, or even Jivatmas. So here, Swamitva, that is Dasatva. He is the Swami or the Lord, and we are all his subservient uh, servants. Then he is the Atma, we are the body, he, he is, we are the Sharira, Swamitva, Atmatva, Sheshitva, Pumstva. Svebhyo, Dasatva, Dehatva, Vashitva and Street. So in Swami Nambadwari, his Dhruva uh, we see that more than 30 
and uh, decades of 30 uh, dashakas as we call them or units of 10 stanzas are sung as if he is the consort of the Lord himself. So that means we call it as Naika Bhava in Sanskrit. So this Jivatma also, this Neela Devi is the representation of all the Jivatmas. Why she is called as Neela? Naila Neela. So my Guru used to say, the Acharya used to say, though the Sandhi rule would be Neela, it is not, it does not look so nice and it is difficult to pronounce. So it is Neela. And even she is known as Nappinna in Sanskrit, in Tamil. So you have the Jivatmas being represented as one consort that is Neela Devi. Then the entire universe, which is, is consort, which is Bhumi Devi or Bhu Devi. And then the principal consort is Maharakshmi or Shri. So you can say Shri herself takes the form of Bhumi and also the Jivatmas in a way. So she is. There are three aspects, or you can consider these three as independent, independently associated with the Supreme Lord. So there is no um, occasion to actually contradict these three. In fact, they are actually supplementary to each other. Is so, it clear? Yes. Uh, one other thing that I had was uh, that. Uh, we are talking about moksha or mamukshu, about uh, liberation. And there are different concepts of liberation, even in the Shastras. There are four or five different uh, ideas of liberation. We have uh, sarupya, salokya, sarsti, samipya, sayuja, kaivalya. So these are all considered the type of liberation. So uh, we, we've been discussing in another class also about about uh, the difference between Sayuja and Kaivalya. And, uh, and I was just wondering, since, we, since the goal of the book is for, for people who are interested in moksha, first of all, uh, if you could give an overview of what, what different types of mokshas are envisioned by Sri Vaishnavas, as, as, as distinct from other people may have a different idea of what moksha is. Yes, I will. I will talk about that in a subsequent class. So, if anybody else has uh, some question or comment, no, there can... is one question. Is there a possibility of doing like maybe three days consecutively, consecutively, like a small seminar? Well, we can think about that. So, let us see. Probably, you can uh, you can propose something to. Uh, Sri Keshav Das Ji, and he can just, we can have a discussion and, and decide about that. And uh, do ladies also sleep on the left and right? Yes, of, of course, as far as ladies are concerned, these, uh, that rule applies to them also. As far as that is concerned, there is no difference. So, any other question? Namaste, uh, Swami. Just one last thing with respect to that uh, small seminar, if at all possible. Um, is it any way that you will also like um, prepare it in such a way for Western people, especially to make it more practical? So that's why I was thinking that, especially if it's like a small seminar for three days, I'm sure that most Westerners wouldn't be able to do everything that someone who's living in one of the Divyadeshams can do. But I'm sure yeah. that you know, the most essential things you can teach in an anicum like that. That's just my yes. suggestion. Definitely, we'll think about it. I'll discuss with uh, Sri Keshav Das and I'll, uh, I'll we'll, uh, we'll let you know, Shah. Thank you. Jai Shri Manarayan. Shri Shai Deshadaya Patram Dibhatya Dibhunarnavam Tutindra Pravanam Vandeiram Yajamataram Munim 